All right, well, you definitely got my attention. <laughs> so, uh, this thing is a Leonardo da Vinci flying machine? That's what I'm told it is. I was told it hung in a museum out on the East Coast. Okay. Leonardo da Vinci was obsessed with flying. He wrote, like, thousands of pages on it, trying to figure it out. And I'm absolutely positive if ever anyone did strap this thing on, they would be very quickly dead. Uh <laughs> I have a Leonardo da Vinci flying machine that I'm looking to sell today. I picked this up at an estate auction because it's just so interesting to look at, and I've never seen anything like it. I'm not sure how old it is, but I'm assuming it was built in the 50s. I'd like to get $2,400 for my flying machine today. It's definitely cool. I really like it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, everyone knows him from his painting of The Last Supper and, of course, the Mona Lisa. Leonardo da Vinci was born early 1450s, but back then people didn't know much about him. Up until the 1800s, he was just considered an artist, but he was just a man of so many different talents. I mean, he was really, really beyond his time. He was talking about gravity 200 years before Sir Isaac Newton, but all of his writings were held in private hands, so the general public never got to see this stuff. If he only published everything he wrote back then, it would probably be a lot more advanced right now. So this looks like a model from the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci for human-powered flight. Most of his flying machines, he wanted to duplicate the actions of birds. So through these series of pulleys and everything right here, you would have been able to flap the wings. And then they're on a pivot, they're on a hinge, which would make you able to change direction of flight. And there was a lot of thought that went into it, but it's completely impractical. You know, the human body is not strong enough to create its own lift. Let's take a look. There's some issues going on here because we have uh, like some broken parts here, which would looks like they'd be very difficult to duplicate. It's, it needs some TLC. Okay, so how much you want for this thing? I was asking $2,400. Okay, um, I'm really impressed with the quality of it. I mean, th there's some issues. There's a lot of restoration work that has to be done to this thing. As far as being in a museum, it could have been. That's what I was told, but... Okay, um, let me have a museum guy look at it real quick, if you don't mind. If you can hang out. Sure. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go make a phone call. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to fly a plane, much less this thing. Oh, ho, ho. So this is the ornithopter. An ornithopter. Ornithopter, yes. So what is the translation of ornithopter? An ornithopter is a human-powered flying machine. So, okay. you know, if you want to go out and get in, you know, strap on your wings and go flying somewhere, this is what you need. Well, this is not what you need because this one's not going to work for you. But this is the one that was designed by Leonardo da Vinci. It's a model of it, obviously. Now, da Vinci was interesting. He wasn't the first one to design one of these things. There was actually a monk who designed one about 100 years before this and jumped off a steeple and fell in the, the snow. It didn't work for him either. <laughs> <laughs> but Leonardo became very interested in flight, mainly because of his interest in military armaments. And he thought that if you could fly, you could get aerial reconnaissance of the opposing forces. So he began to really research birds. And this particular design was one that was in one of his, his writings. OK, but it's pretty correct. Yeah, it looks to me from what I'm seeing on it, yeah. The details are quite nice on it, and it's well made. But you can see that there's some damage. And when you're using this kind of jute rope and that, it, it, it just ages as, as time goes on. He was saying this was like a museum model or something like that. I, huh. I just don't know. It's possible there's no way to say for sure without some sort of paperwork with it. And normally, if this was part of a museum collection, it would have a museum number on it. I don't see any sign of an accession number. So my guess is if it was in a museum, it was just what we would call a prop. All right. I think I got enough info on it. Good. Thanks, man. You're Alrighty. the best. Oh, OK, so I'd give you 800 bucks for it, because it's going to cost me 1,000 bucks just for someone to make it pretty again. Would you do 1,000? Nope. 
I am buying myself an incredible headache. That's all I'm buying here, okay? I will give you 800 bucks for it, and then I gotta restore it, and hopefully he only charges me like $1,000 and doesn't come along and say it's gonna be 5,000, and then therefore it's just trash. So I am gambling at 800 bucks. Yeah, I'll take 800. All right, sweet. Um, I have an ornithopter. Uh, just cruise over to the pawn counter over there, uh, get your ID, we'll do some paperwork, and I'll get you paid. All right. I guarantee you I'm the first person on my block with an ornithopter.